Hey everyone, I'm Tony Marsh and uh, welcome to the video version of my short story podcast called The Rainbow Road No-No. Uh, if you like what you hear and see, you can uh, listen to more stories uh, on Spotify and I'll leave the link in the description. Today's story is called The Topical Food Diet and uh, it's about uh, the idea that uh, there's a diet that... Um, you don't need to eat the food, you just need to come to contact with it, okay? So the topical food diet, here it goes. Kurt, it's so good to see you. He and Annie embraced, and Annie joined him at a table by the wall inside of Lola's Cafe on Chicago's north side. And you look amazing, she said. You've lost weight. Kurt patted his belly and said proudly, down 25 pounds since April, darn near close to my goal. Well, you look great. What's your secret? I mean, how were you able to slim down like that? You got to have a secret, right? Kurt sipped water with lemon through a straw from the side of his mouth and winked and nodded while sipping. So what is it? Spill the tea. Kurt pushed his glass to one side and put his elbows on the table and leaned forward. Annie did too. It's called the topical food diet. The topical food diet? The topical food diet. Kurt leaned back as the young waiter took Annie's drink order. Ice water without lemon. Tell me about the topical food diet, Annie said. Well, it's counterintuitive, but the majority of the nutrients we absorb from food are absorbed topically through the skin, the stomach and digestive tract. And the bulk of the food goes to waste. Thanks, Annie said to the waiter when he put her glass of water on the table. You are welcome. Do we need more time or... I think we'd like a starter, said Kurt. As if sharing another secret, he told Annie, they have great guacamole here. Do you still make it tableside? He asked the red-haired waiter. We sure do. An order of tableside guac and I'll be back for your entree orders. Perfect, said Kurt. He leaned back in. You don't need to eat the food, Annie. You just need to come into contact with it. That's interesting, she said. Soon, Blake, the waiter, was chopping up onions and jalapenos and mashing avocado with mortar and pestle, and he squeezed in a lime and shook salt while the old friends caught up. How are you and Dave? Kurt asked Annie. Going well, she replied. Our two-year two year anniversary is coming up next month. Hard to believe we've been dating that long, but here we are. Congrats, said Kurt. Jeez, two years. Man, where does the time go, huh? The guacamole was on the table now. We're supposed to spend a weekend in Vallarta, just hoping we can both get the time off. Kurt dipped a chip into the guac, then brought it toward his face as if to eat it but instead he smeared some of the guacamole onto his cheek and let the chip fall onto his plate. Annie was a bit taken aback. Vallarta, nice, he said. He applied the second bite to his clean cheek, and this time he smashed the chip in onto his face and the crumbs stuck in the guacamole that clung to his skin. I see what you mean by topical now, said Annie, taking a bite of her own chip orally. So that really works, huh? Kurt gestured to himself with his hands as if to say, I'm living proof. The guacamole was around his cheeks, forehead, and chin and beginning to harden when the waiter had come back to take their entree order. Hey, you're a TFD da, a tea guy, said Blake, removing their plates in the guacamole bowl. My partner swears by it. He's down 30 pounds himself. So have we decided on our entrees? Kurt gestured toward Annie. Yes, I think I'm going to have the spaghetti and meatballs, she said. Excellent choice, ma'am. And for you, sir. Uh, I'm going to do the baked salmon with mashed potatoes and asparagus. Excellent. I'll take these menus from you and be back with your entrees. Thanks so much, said Annie. It's been so long since I've been on the north side. So much has changed, Annie said, watching passers-by from the window. The maple trees that line Wrightwood Avenue had donned their leafy late spring dress. 
When the dinners came, Kurt cut the piece of baked salmon in half and began to unbutton his dress shirt. Annie surveyed the room with growing embarrassment, but to her relief, no one seemed to be paying attention. When his shirt was open, Kurt took one of the salmon halves in hand and tucked it into his armpit. Then he took the other salmon half and pressed it under his other arm. Some of the juice from the fish ran down his rib cage and settled inside his belt. Then he collected the mashed potatoes and spread them over his chest where his chest hair became matted from the buttered spuds and he caked it on extra generous on his pinkish nipples as that flesh is supple and highly absorbent of nutrition. Annie had barely touched her spaghetti. Geez, Annie, said Kurt, this might be totally inappropriate. Annie was finding it hard to look at her old friend. I mean, what am I doing? Kurt was packing some of the mashed potatoes into his belly button. I mean, it's been five years since we broke up. Five years at least. At least five years, Annie concurred. I was still at Perlman and Gold, and you had just barely finished your doctorate when we ended things. So it's at least five years. I know, he said. I guess a part of me thought that our getting together today, after all this time, would give me some closure. Closure I'm never, never sure I really had. Annie put her hand on his for a time, then took it away. But to tell you the truth, I haven't been able to move on. When Kurt spoke, the guacamole that covered his face was still there, and it separated when he opened his mouth in a jagged crevasse like Oscar the Grouch. He had a piece of asparagus in each nostril, and a few stalks coming out of each ear, all in the name of good health. I always thought we'd have a chance to make a real go of it, Annie. Aw, oh, geez, Annie, I'm still in love with you. Kurt was overcome with emotion, and the dry, cracking guac around his eyes was becoming moist again. Kurt, Annie said with her hands in her lap, Dave proposed to me last weekend, and I said yes. Kurt sniffled once, and then composed himself. For a few moments he was quiet, then he said, I'm happy for you, Annie. Did we save room for dessert? Blake was back. Nothing for me, thanks, said Annie. Kurt sat straight up. Fudge cake, please. The waiter set the massive slice of double fudge brownie cake before Kurt, and Annie said, So where are you planning to put that? Kurt, inexhaustible in his willingness to teach, explained, Desserts are best as a suppository. And with that, Kurt Starkus, Ph.D., dropped his trousers and shorts and knelt on the chair with his knees on the seat and his elbows on the back with his aft quarters lined up at Annie, Rosenblum, soon to be Jameson. His tongue was poking out the side of his mouth and wiggling like one might do when threading a needle. Annie shielded her eyes with one hand over her brow, but peeked once, sheerly from morbid curiosity. Kurt had the fudge packed in good in his ass crack, and the whole business looked like a smooth brown basketball. Kurt paid for the meal, and they said goodbye on the sidewalk outside of the restaurant. It was really good seeing you, Annie. Likewise, Kurt. You take care of yourself. I guess I'll... He started. Go home. Go home, she said, as if to fill in his thought. Get yourself a bath. Take care, Annie. They embraced once more. And those were the last words Kurt Starkus would ever say to Annie Rosenblum.